construction began on the Aberdeen-Springfield Canal System in 1893 and the 170 miles of main canals and primary laterals were completed by 1910. For the first 20 years of operation, the general manager reported transmission loss rates of 32 to 35 percent, which is typical for elevated earthen canals. Over the years, transmission loss increased gradually and for the past 40 years has been in excess of 50 percent. The past 20 years, our loss has leveled out to 62 percent. On average, that loss rate equates to 650 cubic feet per second and nearly 200,000 acre feet per year. As loss rates increased, we started having difficulties meeting delivery demands from our shareholders. From the late 1950s through the 1970s, we saw about 17,000 acres switch from using canal water to using groundwater. Eventually, enough acres were being irrigated by groundwater that our loss rate and capacity issues stopped being a big problem. Recently, a settlement agreement between downstream surface water users and groundwater users in our area resulted in the requirement to reduce acres being irrigated from groundwater. Consequently, we're seeing acres return to our system. In preparation for this, we began looking at ways to conserve water and restore capacity. The most obvious solution was to reduce our loss. In 2015, we began a comprehensive loss study of the system. This allowed us to make sound decisions about where to install the liner. We identified two reaches on our main canal in the Moreland area that not only had significant loss, but were primarily constructed of gravel. The gravel substrate made for very easy installation. We researched several liner manufacturers and decided to install IPG's armor liner. IPG's team helped us determine the right product for our application and gave us great customer service after the sale to make sure we had no problems with the installation. In order to protect the liner material from sunlight and extend the warranty, we decided to bury the liner. The installation consisted of three steps, excavation, liner installation, and backfilling. We used long-reach excavators to remove two feet of material from the bottom and sides of the canal and set the slope to three to one. We installed the liner to extend one foot above the high water mark and anchored it in the bank using a two foot by two foot deep keyway. Keyways were also placed at the upstream and downstream ends of the reach. Each liner panel was unrolled along its 300 foot length and then unfolded using employees and equipment. Excess liner was removed and saved for use on smaller laterals and ditches. Once the keyways were anchored, the excavator started backfilling leaving 10 to 15 feet uncovered at the ends of the panels, weighted with sandbags to allow for welding the seams. After the seams were welded, they were backfilled and the bottom was set to grade. The first phase lined 4,200 feet of our main canal that lost an average of 75 cubic feet per second, and the second phase lined 3,300 feet in the reach directly upstream. This reach lost an average of 50 cubic feet per second. A combined savings of 125 cubic feet per second over our average 190 day irrigation season is approximately 47,000 acre feet of water. Typically, half of our supply comes from storage water in the three Upper Snake River reservoirs. That means that this project will save us an average of 23,000 acre feet of storage water each year.